I'm just an example. If you take the human body, everything is so interrelated and functions so together that if you take the heart out, the human body dies. If you take the kidney out, the human body dies. If you take, you know, uh, any body along the brain out, the human body dies. Okay. So the human body forms a totality. Deleuze answers with his theory of assemblages. He says, yes, there are holes that are more than some other parts, holes that are irreducible to their parts, but that doesn't mean that you cannot take parts apart. For instance, today we know, Hegel didn't know because back in his age you couldn't do that, but today we know that you can actually take a human being, take his heart out, put the heart on a freezer, say you're in open heart operation, as long as you connect the, the veins and the arteries to a, to a pump, so that the blood continues to flow, the, heart, the, the human body continues to, to live without the heart. Then you can do all the bypass operations that you need, get those arteries that are clogged, cut out, and put a new piece of artery, take, get that heart off the freezer and put it back into the body. In other words, today we can do things with the human body that you couldn't do before, which has shown that the body is more an assemblage. An assemblage is like a totality, except that it's not a seamless whole. You can take things apart and plug them into other assemblages. You can take the heart out from somebody and put a baboon's heart instead. It's not that it has been done so often, but they, at least there's a couple of human cases in which they have, they have put animals' hearts into them. Which of course in, in, in Hegelian times that was unthinkable. Now this is just an example, and I'm going to give you much more examples tomorrow. But we need to get rid of that idea because when you begin with totalities, it's very easy to think about human history and human uh, society in terms of totalities, like the market or the state, and conduct your entire way of thinking, for instance, about what's going on right now with the economic meltdown crisis, in terms of the state versus the market, two abstract <coughs> entities that are very close to essences. For Deleuze, there is no such thing as the market in general or the state in general. The, 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 these two entities are assemblages that need to be explained historically and need to be explained you know, in, a, in a much more detailed and much more concrete way. So that's what I'm going to spend the morning doing tomorrow. Examining the kinds of social entities, communities, organizations, Assemblages of communities, as in a social justice movement, there are several communities together demonstrating uh, for uh, human rights, or demonstrating for women's rights, or demonstrating for civil rights. Uh, uh, assemblages of organizations like industrial networks, seas, nation states. We're going to spend the, the morning discussing the kinds of social entities that are valid within a Delusian philosophy. The state in general, the market in general, are going to turn out to be bogus entities. They're going to turn out to be entirely discursive entities that don't really have any referent in reality. And therefore, the discussions between the Democrats and the Republicans over whether we should let the market decide everything in final analysis, or we should let the state decide in final analysis, are empty discourses, which is why politicians can never come up with solutions for anything. They are talking about nonsense when they should be talking about this community, that community, this city, that city, this marketplace, that's a very, very different thing, this bazaar here, this bazaar over there, or this government organization here, this government organization there. Instead of talking about concrete things, they end up discussing abstract things, which are very close to essences, the kind of thing that we're going to get rid of it in the very first class. So obviously we're not going to allow social essences to come in in the second class. We need to get rid of them. But it's a different way of getting rid of them. It needs assemblage theory. So we're going to discuss assemblage theory tomorrow from 10 to 1. Then from 4 to 7, when we come back in the afternoon, I'm going to apply assemblage theory to the specific case of economics. Taking advantage of the fact that we are right now in the middle of this a storm that is engulfing the entire globe, uh, in which incredibly powerful 
organizations that were too big to fail have gotten us into this problem and they have had to be bailed out by the government, which basically means that these organizations privatized profits where they ended up socializing losses. Because there cannot be anything more unfair than that. You know, all the profits they generated with their, you know, uh, credit default swaps and all those crazy instruments that they invented in the late 90s and early, in, in the early part of the century, all those profits, they, they, were, they were pocketed up by, by, by those executives and all those people working there. When it came to the losses, it is us who have to be paying for those losses. Now, of course, the typical way of thinking about it is using the word capitalism or globalization, but as we will going to see tomorrow, night or tomorrow afternoon, those two words, capitalism and globalization, are still too essentialist. They are still too vague and, and, and Hegelian to be of any use here. We need much more concrete terms to talk about these things. We're still going to be talking about global processes, we're still going to be talking about money and accumulations of economic power and exploitation and so on. But I'm going to be arguing tomorrow evening that the word capitalism has become too much of a slogan, too much of a t-shirt, too much of, too much of a bumper sticker. You know, it's good for demonstrations, right? When you are out there, hell no, we won't go, hell no, we won't go. You're not going to be able to, to tell those crowds and to rally those crowds with the kind of theory I'm going to tell you tomorrow evening if this takes too long and everybody will be going, oh man, we should just go demonstrate or something. This is too boring. You need something fast when you are doing demonstrations and rallying the troops. You need to just say, global capitalism is evil. Yeah. But outside of those, and I completely agree that I will not go and, and, and completely kill a demonstration and the spirit of a demonstration by giving them all. Oh, let's distinguish assemblages from fatalities. Huh? No, but that doesn't even rhyme. Yeah. I know. So I would never do that because I know it doesn't work in that particular situation. In a particular situation, you need just something that that demonstrates numerousness, that demonstrates unity, that demonstrates a, a community of purpose. Particularly, two government institutions. If you're doing the demonstration in front of the UN, or you're doing the demonstration in front of some government agency or some government uh, uh, body, it needs to need to demonstrate numerousness, unity purpose and the fact that you are there to extract certain rights from the state, women rights or civil rights or, 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 or freedom of speech rights or freedom of assembly rights. And that being the goal, all you need is that mass of people, all of them chanting the same little slogan. But when you get back to, to, to your houses, you get back to your offices of the organizers and so on, you need a much more concrete analysis Otherwise, all those gains that you get from demonstrating will never be realized. Because you will never have any sense of what social change implies. The, small, the slow, painfully slow sometimes <coughs> process of reforming organizations, changing communities, helping it, it, to establish new linkages between organizations, communities, and other entities with theories and with explanations that go beyond slogans. So that's what we're going to do then tomorrow night. Talk about economics in a way that tries to get rid of slogans. In a way that tries to get rid of those old words that have been very useful for a long time, but that theoretically they just simply don't make much sense anymore. And applying, of course, assemblage, assemblage theory to the, to the, to the specific realm of economics. So tomorrow we're going to spend all day talking about social questions. Okay, I'm telling you this because today we're going to be so far away from anything social. We're going to be talking about the material world of the whole morning, and we're going to be talking about subjectivity all afternoon. And you may, you may get the feeling that, wait a minute, aren't we just separating human beings from their social context? And aren't we, ta aren't we just talking about the, the natural world which are, without talking about how cities and nation states and, and industrial production affect the natural world, but well, yes, of course they do, and that's what we're going to be discussing tomorrow. We just need to partition our class into, into sections that make sense, that are self-contained, while at the same time...